Let's look at an example problem using Hess's law. If I take two moles of sulfur dioxide gas and combine it with oxygen gas, I'll make two moles of sulfur trioxide gas. And what I would like to know is what is the heat of reaction, or what is the change in enthalpy for this reaction? We're given two pieces of information. First, we're given this reaction. If you take sulfur and combine it with oxygen, you'll make sulfur dioxide gas. And the delta H for that reaction is negative 297 kilojoules. We're also given that two moles of sulfur will combine with oxygen gas to make sulfur trioxide. And the delta H for this reaction is negative 791 kilojoules. So I want to use those two pieces of information to find the delta H for the overall reaction above. Hess's law tells us that if a reaction occurs in more than one step, you can add up the enthalpy changes of the individual steps to get the overall enthalpy change of the reaction. So all we have to do here is add up the enthalpy changes of the steps. But there's a problem. You can see that these two reactions don't actually add up to my overall reaction. The first hint I see is the sulfur dioxide. In the overall reaction, the sulfur dioxide is a reactant. But if I look at my steps, the sulfur dioxide is a product. So before we can add the steps together, we actually have to have the steps match our overall reaction. So let's take this first reaction right here, the one that has the sulfur dioxide on the wrong side. If we're going to make that match, we have to flip the sulfur dioxide. So I'm going to rewrite the first reaction and move the sulfur dioxide over to the reactant side and then move the sulfur and the oxygen over to the product side. Now that means that my delta H is no longer going to be negative 297, it's going to be positive 297 kilojoules. But there's more to the story than that. If you look at the overall reaction, we actually need two moles of sulfur dioxide in the overall reaction, and this step only has one mole. So flipping it is not going to be enough for us. I'm going to have to multiply everything by two. So if I have two sulfur dioxides here, that's going to give me two sulfurs and two oxygens. Which means this delta H is no longer positive 297. I'm going to have to multiply that by two and get positive 594 kilojoules. So I took this first step and I flipped it and multiplied it by two. So the sign became positive and the magnitude doubled. Well, let's look at the second reaction here. Well, this one actually looks okay because in the overall reaction, I need two moles of sulfur trioxide as a product. And this one gives me two moles of sulfur trioxide as a product. So I'm gonna leave this one alone. I'm gonna take my second reaction and just write it as is. Two moles of sulfur plus three moles of oxygen give me two moles of sulfur trioxide and so my delta H doesn't change it just stays as negative 791 kilojoules. So if these two reactions match I should be able just to add them together to get my overall reaction. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for things that I can cancel. I can cancel them if they show up on one side of a reaction in one step and another side of the reaction in the other step. So for example, in step one, I have two sulfurs as products, and in step two, I have two sulfurs as reactants, so I can cancel them. In step one, I also have two oxygens as a product. In step two, I have three oxygens, so I can't cancel out all three, but I can cancel out two of them. That's gonna leave me as an oxygen behind. So what's left? Well, on my reactant side here, I've got two SO2, then on my reactant side for reaction two, I'm going to have an O2. And then on the product side, I don't have any more products left in step one. But in step two, I've got two SO3. And that's the overall reaction we were looking for. So now I can use Hess's law. These two steps add up to the overall reaction. So the overall delta H is just going to equal the sum of the individual steps. I get negative 197 kilojoules.